Wrestling fans, promoters, wrestlers, and anyone who enjoys pro wrestling now have something new to be excited about. The Wrestling Fans International Association, the WFIA, is back. WFIA is an association that exists to promote, grow, and support professional wrestling throughout the world. Membership is free. Your membership includes a free digital bi-monthly publication of the Wrestling Fan News newsletter, association updates, voting privileges, and much more. Please go to thewfia.org, that's T-H-E-W-F-I-A.org, and become a member today. Wrestling. My guest today is a true icon and legend in the sport of professional wrestling. He is a multi-gold medalist in the 1971 Pan Am American Games and was a member of the 1972 Olympic weightlifting team. He was trained by the great Vern Gagne and he's also written a biography, or biography on himself titled Kempatera, Weight of the World with Kenny Casanova. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my Pleasure to introduce the world's strongest man, the original world's strongest man, Ken Patera. Thank you for coming on today, sir. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, there's been a lot of imitators, uh, but the old saying is often duplicated, but never Im <clears throat> often imitated, but never duplicated. That's right. That's yeah. right. You were the first. And yeah. uh, so glad to have you back on. I mean, it's been a couple of years, and I saw you a few weeks back in St. Louis. It was so great to get have some time with you uh, in the lobby and stuff, and at the event, it was a lot of fun. So, and then thank you again for coming on. So, last time we talked, we kind of went about your background a little bit, your childhood, uh, getting into college, the Olympics. Now, I want to get into if we could, Ken, training under Vern. Once you got back. From the Olympics, Vern kind of got you into into camp with that famous class of '72. And I wanted, I would love, and I know the fans would like to hear, what was that like for you? What was that gruel? I I know he was pretty tough on you guys, but yeah. tell us a little bit about the camp and 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 the guys in it and what it was like for you. Well, you know, my uh, my oldest brother Jack Patera mm -hmm. was. Uh, defensive line coach for the Minnesota Vikings back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, 60, I want to say 68 to 74. Okay. And then he became the head, first head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was here in Minnesota, he befriended a guy by the name of Vern Gagne, uh, AWA super heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people aren't aware, but Vern was an All-American uh, amateur wrestler at the University of Minnesota back in 48, 47, 48, 49 in that era. And uh, so anyway, uh, I was, uh, I met Vern back here. Uh, I'm in Minnesota now. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Vern in Minnesota in 19... God, 70? Yeah, that'd had, had be 70. And I stopped uh, the World Weightlifting Championships that year were in Columbus, Ohio. And I was living in Portland, Oregon, my hometown. Okay. So I was on my way back to Portland. I says, well, you know, I'll get off in Minneapolis and visit my brother for a week or so, which I did. So mm -hmm. uh, Jack and I were sitting down in the family room one day and he says, Kenny, what do you want to do after the Olympic Games? I says, well, the Olympics aren't for another year and a half, but I would like to uh, get into pro wrestling. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, God, you really do good there. And he says, you, you don't want to play football? I said, no, that's for pussies. <laughs> I, you know, you, uh, Jack and Norman, Dennis, 
they were all pro football players. Those were my brothers. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm, I, I like individual sports, you know, track and field, wrestling, uh, badminton, uh, volleyball, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he says, hey, I know a guy here in Minnesota named Vern Gagne. He said, you ever hear of him? I said, no, I, I never heard of Vern. Because back in the day, back in those days, everything, there's 24 wrestling promotions around the country. So they were all regional. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd never, I'd heard of Mad Dog Vashon because he wrestled in Portland. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a few, uh, Gene Kaniski, uh, and, you know, whatever, Lou says. But uh -huh. anyway, so I get back here to uh, Minnesota, meet my, saw my brother, introduces me to Vern Gagne. So the day I meet Vern, he gave me directions on how to get down to the Dykeman Hotel. That's where the AWA wrestling office was up on the seventh floor, I think it was. Okay. So anyway, I go down there. I walk in, meet Vern, introduce myself. And uh, he says, yeah, he says, I'm kind of busy right now, Ken. Uh, uh, why don't you just take a seat here and, uh, you know, meet some of the boys as they come in and out. And uh, it must have been payday or something because, they, they, you know, the, the wrestlers were coming in and uh, getting introduced to me. And Vern, uh, or his secretary, was giving him a check. And uh, so first, you know, Ed, Ed, Eduardo uh, Capanchier, Frenchman mm -hmm. from Montreal. Then the next one was Mad Dog Vachon. <laughs> and uh, his, his little brother, Butcher Vachon. Wasn't so little. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Butcher was a head taller. You know, about 50 pounds heavier. But uh, yeah. Mad Dog was the elder. Yeah. This, uh, brother. So anyway, uh, then uh, the crusher, the crusher, uh, the man that uh, made Milwaukee famous. So he comes in, he sits down right next to me. And he looks at me. And Vern says, have you ever met Ken? No, but I know who he is. I heard a lot about you. He says, uh, you're Jack Patera's little brother, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he says, uh, so Vern says, Ken, you think you can whip this old fart? I said, well, I'm looking right, you know, nose to nose with Crusher. I said, I don't know. I said, he's pretty tough. I said, I'm pretty tough too. <laughs> and uh, so Crusher kind of gets a, a giggle, you know, he, he was a fun guy. All those guys uh, were good guys. And so anyway, I, I, I met a whole load of them. So I tell uh, Vern says, well, uh, your brother tells me that you want to be a pro wrestler. I says, yeah. He says, well, what makes you think you're tough enough to be a pro wrestler? And I says, well, uh, I said, I'm pretty tough. I said, uh, I've had a few fights. Yeah, but who have you ever beat? I said, a bunch of punks. <laughs> <laughs> he says, that's what most wrestlers would say. So anyway, let me spit this up. Yep. So anyway, I... Uh, we used to keep talking. He says, well, the, you, your brother tells me you want to go to the Olympic Games, the Pan American Games, the World Championships, all that stuff. Are you good enough to beat, beat all those big guys? I said, well, I hold most of the records and I've beaten them already. Oh, really? I said, yeah. I, I said, didn't my brother tell you my background? Well, a little bit. I said, no, I'm, I'm legitimate. I'm not a fraud or a phony. 
Mm -hmm. He says, oh, that's what I like to hear. And uh, I said, what, uh, I need some help. He said, well, what kind of help you need? I said, well, I need a place to train full time and I need uh, some financial backing. And he says, well, uh, where are you training now? I said, out, well, out in Portland, Oregon, but we, we don't have the proper facilities out there. And uh, so anyway, he, he said, well, how much money uh, would it take for you to train properly for the Olympics? And he says, yeah, let's see, the Olympics are a year and a half away. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. And uh, well, how much? I says, well, the, now you have to understand this is 1970, mm -hmm. uh, beginning of 71, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. I says, well, a hundred dollars a week would be fantastic. He said, a hundred bucks a week. He says, I think, uh, I think we can do that for you. And Wally Carbo, uh, sitting right next to him, said, Wally, cut uh, Ken Patera here a check for $100 right now. So <laughs> Wally gets the checkbook out, you know, signs a check over for 100 bucks. And Bert, there was a check in the mail every week for a year and a half for $100. Did you ever wonder what could have been with the AWA had things gone differently? Had their fortunes gone differently? Had certain wrestlers not left and perhaps more money would have been at the disposal of the Ganyas? Well, wonder no further. You can go to Brad Drake's YouTube channel and experience the 1987 Supermod for yourself. As Brad Drake starts off in May 1987, along with Greg Ganya, Baron Von Rochke, Vern Gagne himself, Nick Bockwinkel, Larry Zabisco, Kurt Hennig, and a slew of others as he plays and saves the AWA. Wow. A lot of people say, God, that's not very much money. Well, this is 1970, yeah. 1971. The average salary was about 100 bucks a week. Yeah. Or maybe not even that. Yeah, so anyway, uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I didn't have any expenses mm -hmm. uh, except for training. You know, my food was, my grocery bill was probably 50 bucks a week. And then, uh, you know, I had a car payment in there. Uh, it was about 50 bucks a month. And I, I had a brand new Firebird. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just picked it up at the car dealer. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, that were, went real well. So Vern says, well, if I'm going to sponsor you, I'm going to have to have you move back to Minnesota, Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way I can, you know, keep track of your progress and everything. I said, God, I'd love that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I flew back to Portland and about a week later, I get all my stuff together and, you know, pay the light bill, the water bill, uh, the last month's rent and whatnot, jump in my Firebird, and take off for Minnesota. Christmas Day. Oh. Yeah. Christmas Day. I left at two in the morning. Wow. And, uh, yeah. I drove all the way through 18 oh, wow. hours, 18 hours, drive. take off from Portland, go through Eastern Oregon, through Idaho, uh, down through Colorado and uh, uh, into Wyoming, into Nebraska, up to up through Iowa. And here I am in Minnesota, Southern Minnesota. <laughs> And uh, making pretty good time. Yeah. And uh, luckily, the weather, I, I, I missed a blizzard down uh, in uh, Nebraska. Ooh. And uh, I just barely missed it. It was blowing and the snow was coming down. 
Unbelievable. Yeah. I couldn't see shit. And finally, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just yeah, kept no, I believe trucking. it. Yeah. I just kept trucking and all of a sudden, maybe a half an hour, I come out of the snow and it was clear all the way to Minnesota. That's great. And uh, uh, so I get up, uh, I found my brother's house and he lived in a beautiful house over in he died in Minnesota well, yeah. at that time. Well, it still is. It's uh, probably the wealthiest suburb in uh, Minnesota. I mean, a yeah. lot of, lot, lot of millionaires. And uh, so anyway, uh, I get uh, settled in at my brother's house. And after about a week or so, I said, Jack, is there any place to drink around here? You know, the bar or nightclub? <laughs> You know, I said, I'm bored. He said, well, yeah, why don't you just drive over to Excelsior Boulevard? And uh, there's a ton of bars over there. So I, I go over to Excelsior Boulevard and uh, I'm driving down uh, Excelsior and I see this bar, George is in the park. And uh, they had you know, like two parking lots just packed. Wow. So I pulled in there and I said, well, this looks like a fun place. So I, I go in and there's this blonde haired guy working the door, bouncer. And uh, I asked him, I said, hey, you have a cigarette machine around here? And he says, yeah, it's right over there. And he keeps looking at me, looking at me. And so I go over there, pull two quarters out pack of cigarettes back then, 50 cents. Yeah. Now, I think it's ten dollars and fifty cents now. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't smoke anymore, so yeah. I haven't for years and years. But anyway, uh I go over there, pull the the plug on the cigarette machine, and here's this guy standing right next to me. I look up, I said, Yeah. And he says, aren't you Ken Patera? I said, yeah. He said, what are you doing in George's in the park? I said, well, my brother told me this would be a good place to come and have a few beers. He says, yeah. He says, I saw you on TV last week on the Wild World of Sports. Uh, I said, yeah, that was the World Weightlifting Championships. And he said, uh, well, you know, what are you doing in here? I said, well, I needed a beer. <laughs> I said, uh, it looked as good as any place else. And he said, yeah, it's a fun place. So he goes back to his chair by the front door. And I'm kind of casing the place out. So I, 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 there was a bar in the back. Uh, called the Red Dog Saloon. And then they had a dinner theater up front. You know, everybody's all dressed up and <laughs> you know, everything. I said, I don't, I don't want to sit up there, you know. So, I, And then the, the Red Dog Saloon was considered a working man's bar. You know, everybody in yeah. there mud on their boots and uh, everything. And so anyway, uh, about 12 o'clock, uh, uh, this, the bouncer comes back and says, do you mind if I sit down with you? And I said, no, go ahead. Well, it turned out to be Ric Flair. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I asked him his name, uh, Ric Flair. I says, uh, how long have you been bouncing here? It's about a year, year and a half now. And I says, well, yes, yeah, sit, sit down, I'll buy you a beer. No, I'll buy you one. I think beers were 25 cents. Yeah, yeah 25 cents then. Uh, you know, a, a regular drink with whiskey was 35 cents. And so we sat there and got half hooped up. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, going to the world championships and the Pan American Games were coming up in about six months. Yeah. And I told him I was trained for the Pan American Games and everything. He said, well, uh, how's it look? Is it, 
are the odds in your favor? I says, oh yeah. I said, I'm going to smoke them all. And I did like <laughs> four gold medals. Yeah. I got, back then they had the military press, the snatch, the clean and jerk, and then the total. And right. the total is what won the overall thing. And so I set, I don't know, I, I, I think I set six or seven new uh, records and won the gold medal. And uh, so uh, at that time, Rick and I had already rented a house together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we were living in South Minneapolis. That was the original animal house. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I knew Rick was a lot of fun, but I didn't realize that he was a party animal too. I mean, but every night, you know, he had to be at a party every night. So of course, what what better place to have a party at our house? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, that that's how uh, we got together. Wow! Wow! And, yeah. And oh, and I, I told him I said uh, I was uh, getting in shape to start uh, training at Vern Gagne's training camp. And he says, "Oh, I I want to." Uh, the University of Minnesota with uh, uh, Ganya's uh, son, uh, Greg Ganya. And mm -hmm. uh, we were on the football team together. And, uh, there was another guy, Jim Brunzel, and uh, him and Greg Ganya were friends. Well, after that season, Greg had transferred out to uh, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a quarterback. But uh, Brunzel, he stayed on the University of Minnesota. He was a wide receiver and a yeah. high jumper on the track and field team. You know, he could jump almost seven feet. Yeah. I that's mean, that's why they call him Jumping Jimmy Brunzel. Yeah. yeah. He, he, I mean, he, he was a good. legitimate high jumper. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, uh, and by that time, uh, Rick had gotten kicked out uh, for <laughs> yeah. bad grades. Bad attitude, bad this, bad that. <laughs> but I, I had already graduated from Brigham Young University, you know, way yeah. before that. Hello, everyone. This is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to tell you about a new podcast out called Fouls Count Anywhere. It is a classic pro wrestling pro podcast that brings you the legends of wrestling with true wrestling fans Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. They bring on guests that are legends in this business, as well as wrestlers of today, promoters, referees, you name it. They have them on there, folks. And I encourage you to listen to them. If you're on YouTube, watch them. They drop every Saturday. They have their podcast. They drop it in the afternoon. So look forward to that podcast coming out. Falls Count Anywhere podcast with Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. Folks, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. And enjoy the podcast. I was about, I think I was six years, yeah, six years older than uh, Rick and Greg and Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And so Rick and I were living together then. He bugged me almost every day on a daily basis. Get me into pro wrestling. Get me into pro wrestling. I said, wow. I said, Rick, I talked to Vern, you know, about twice a week. I don't talk to him every day. Yeah. Because I trained for the you know, Pan American Games and the Olympic Games. And yeah. Um, uh, so we, we hadn't even started. We didn't start wrestling camp until I got back from uh, – Munich, Germany mm -hmm. in 1972 in the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And right. so finally, when I get back, you know, Rick, first thing, Ken, have you talked to Vern about me yet? I said, Rick, I haven't even talked to Vern about Ken Patera yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, within a week or so, I finally got uh, a hold of uh, Vern. And uh, when I got back from Munich, and anyway, one thing led, led, I got Rick into camp. Mm -hmm. At first, 
at first, uh, Vern didn't want to do it because we already had a full camp. It was a kid, uh, 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 Bob Bruggers. He was all American football player from the University of Minnesota. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, jumping Jimmy Brunzel, Greg Gagne, uh, and a guy that everybody loves, the Iron Sheik. His real name's Kazro Vasiri. He was yeah. legitimately from uh, Iran. You yeah. know, a lot of people think that he's like a uh, like a drugstore uh, Indian. That was a old saying back in the day. Yeah. Uh, no, th this guy was a legitimate uh, uh, amateur wrestler from uh, Iran, and mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, myself. So Vern Gagne says, no, we don't have any room. We have, we have five guys. That's all I want. I said, five guys? I said, well, if, if you let Rick come to camp, there will be six. That way we can pair off, you know, equally. Yeah. And he said, well, I didn't think of that. He says, how big is Rick? He's about 280 pounds. And you're what? I said, well, I'm three, three fifteen, three twenty. He said, well, that'd be a perfect match. And I said, yeah. He said, okay. Call Rick and let him uh, let him know that he can come to camp. And I said, well, can I bring him in a couple of days when camp officially starts? He says, yeah. And so uh, it all worked out. And uh, yeah. so then uh, the six of us, you know, there, every one of us wound up being legitimate main eventers. Yeah. And, uh, how many training camps can say that? Yeah. Yeah. They, they said, I've heard, Ken, that uh, Burns camps, the success rate for the wrestlers that went through his camp to be main eventers was like 98%. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, I'd say that. Yeah. Yeah. 98%. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, a couple of years after us, uh, Ricky Steamboat came through there. Uh, 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 Scott Irwin mm -hmm. and uh, his brother, uh, uh, Wild, Bur Wild Bill Irwin. <laughs> You know, the Irwin boys uh, from uh -huh. uh, Duluth, Minnesota, they wound up being legitimate main eventers. Unfortunately, yeah. Scotty got brain cancer, I don't know, seven, eight years later and passed away. But, uh, yeah. well, Bill, he's still around. Yeah. And uh, then we had uh, Chris Taylor that was uh, in the 72 Olympic Games with me. Yeah. Six, five, 400 pounds. Greco Roman wrestler, great guy. Anyway, and then uh, Sergeant Slaughter, his real name is Bob Remus. Mm -hmm. uh, him and Chris Taylor wound up being good friends. And uh, um, let's see who else. So, just in that small period of time, yeah, everybody, it seemed to me like everybody that went through that camp wound up being a main eventer. You know, yeah. somewhere in the country. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, it was a it class. Was, yeah. Vern ran a, ran, ran a successful camp, no doubt. I mean, and, yeah. uh, you know, he had, uh, I know you had Billy Robinson there as one of your trainers. I heard he was pretty hard on you guys. Oh, yeah. He beat us like dogs. <laughs> I tell you, four, four to six weeks of Billy Robinson, you didn't want to be a, a pro wrestler. You wanted to quit. <laughs> yeah. I heard he was pretty tough on you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It was a tough training camp. Yeah. Do you ever wonder what would happen if, well, if. If you give a dad a podcast. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's just settle this debate right here, right now. <laughs> it's not even just the greatest PlayStation game. It's, it's, it's the greatest game ever. Not to toot my own heart, but exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remember he kicked me so hard I thought I owed him money. I love it. I'm excited for this one.
He goes, what is your name? And I was like, it's Thrash. You get punched in the face on the daily. Man, this guy won't shut up. I wear that as a badge of honor. Yeah, I, I, I got knocked out cold in that match. It was awesome. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we make dogs sing. Do you always do these interviews with your shirt off? Going live in three, two, one. So now we've been filming for the last six months. I panicked. Followed by. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. If you give a dad a podcast, available everywhere podcasts are found. So yeah. if we could, let's talk. Okay, camp. You After you graduate camp, <clears throat> excuse me, you go back and you start wrestling. Who was your first, where was your first match and who was it with? Oh, wow. <clears throat> My first match was in Wilmer, Minnesota against Scrap Iron George Gadaski. All right. And he was an old veteran, old you know, uh, tough guy, tough guy. He, he was from uh, uh, Calgary, Canada. Okay. And uh, good guy. And uh, by that time, you know, he was in his early 40s, mid 40s, something like that. Mm -hmm. By mid 40s. But uh, scrappy, scrappy, scrap iron. And I wrestled him out in uh, Wilmer, Minnesota, beat him in about five minutes. And uh, we got back to the locker room. He says, you know, you're really going to be good. Yeah. I said, well, thank you. He said, you've taken that training camp of Vern's uh, to heart. I said, well, we all are. We're all, you know, working hard. And he said, yeah. well, just keep it up. You'll be a main eventer someday. And I Man. think uh, within four, no three months, I was ta tag team partner with the Crusher, it's the likes of superstar Billy Graham and Ivan Koloff uh, wow. over in Milwaukee. And oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I went up the ladder pretty quick. And then I, of course, I was Rookie of the Year. That was nineteen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Rookie, yes. AWA Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's amazing. Because, you know, you were, back then, you were very, you were very strong, but you were very bulky, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, and, but for your size, you had such agility yeah. and you could move uh, for your size. Most guys that were that big, even though how strong they were, they couldn't, they can't move. I mean, no. Chris Taylor, God bless him, you know, great wrestler, but he couldn't move like you. Yeah. And, and and so that says a lot about you and your abilities. Let's talk well, a little when bit. I could... first started, when I first started, I was doing kip-ups, leapfrogs, cartwheels. Mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah. I, I was like a... a, a, a what, what do you call it? Uh, the girls on the sideline, the hoop below. Cheerleader? Yeah, I was like a cheerleader as far as my moves. I yeah. Mean, I could do anything. Yeah. You know, kips up, leap, leap frogs. Yeah. You know, uh, splits. No. I could even do the splits. 315 oh. pounds. People wow. People looked at me and they said, Jesus, <laughs> I, how are you so athletic? I said, well, I was an Olympic lifter. Olympic yeah. lifters have to be limber and subtle. You know, yeah. we can't be just bulky and stiff as a board. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were real, the, the Olympic lifters were good athletes. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Moving from territory to territory, I mean, you were in, if not all of them, most of them. Yeah. What, what was that like going from, uh, you were, and you were a champion, and probably all of them as well, either as a singles or a tag team champion. Yeah. yeah. What was that experience like moving from, you know, you did your time or whatever, and, and they, what was that like for you? What was that experience? Well, after about a little over a year, mm -hmm. Vern Gagne wanted me to uh, go down to Texas for Fritz von Erich. Okay. And, uh, 
uh, Joe Blanchard and uh, 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 the guy down in Houston, uh, Paul Paul Bosch. Paul Bosch. Yeah. And uh, I, I had just got married about six months prior to that. And I said, well, I said, okay. So I told my wife, I said, we're going to be moving down to Dallas. Really? I said, yeah, really. I yeah. said, I am. Are you coming? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, every territory I went to, uh, I was either a main eventer. Yeah. Well, I was a main eventer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we went down, uh, so we went down to Texas, lived in uh, uh, Dallas, just outside of Dallas, and we uh, we would, uh, you know, go, go down. Uh, it'd be Fort Worth, Dallas, San Antonio, Corpus mm -hmm. Christi, and then Houston on uh, Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Well, after about three or four months, I'm in San Antonio one afternoon, and I went into a weightlifting gym down there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the guys suggested this particular one. That's where all the muscle heads trained. I walk in there. Who's in there? Frank Goodish. Well, Frank Goodish and about five of his buddies. Uh, for those that don't know who Frank Goodish was, that was Bruiser Brody. Yes. And uh, so Bruiser Brody and I became good friends. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walked in the place, everybody stops. They're all looking at me. Is that Ken Patera? Is that Ken Patera? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, so uh, I walked over to uh, those guys who were doing squat, doing their back squat routine. Mm -hmm. I went over there and introduced myself. And they said, God, what are you doing in here? I said, well, I'm wrestling in town tonight. And yeah, that's what somebody said. So anyway, uh, I, I met uh, Bruiser Brody down there. And... Um, and then uh, uh, let's see, the next night we were in, yeah, Corpus Christi and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. Wow. So out of those territories, I won't say what's your favorite, but what was where was one of your favorite places? I know obviously AWA, but you were, you know, you were the Intercontinental Champion, the WWWF. You were... When in the NWA circuit, you were Mid-Atlantic, Missouri, Portland. I mean, I could name a hundred. Yeah. Where was the probably one of your favorite places to work outside of the AWA that you just really enjoyed being around? Well, uh, Mid-Atlantic area. Uh, okay. Jim Crockett Promotions. Uh, that was based out of Charlotte, uh, North mm -hmm. Carolina. And... Uh, you know, at that time, Charlotte was just a little, you know, one horse town, you know, about 160, mm -hmm. 150,000 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but now the metropolitan area, Charlotte's like two and a half or three million people. <laughs> yeah. It's just a it's one a horse town when we were there. <laughs> we sold out. That was the hottest territory in the country at that time when I was down there. Yeah, we had uh, Rick Flair. Well, he he was kind of like me. We were still just getting ready to be uh, legitimate main eventers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were just getting ridding ourselves of the the rookie uh, title. Yeah, and they had Johnny Valentine down there. Uh, uh, they had uh, Wahoo McDaniel. Uh, they had, uh, well, just a, a classic uh, routine uh, or uh, legion of guys. Yeah. And uh, uh, Rick uh, fit right into that. And uh, after about a year, I wound up out in Oklahoma Territory with the cowboy Bill Watts. And uh, out there he had... Uh, uh, Killer Carl Cox, Dick yes. Murdoch, yeah, and um, 
um, Colonel Buck Robley. I mean, we uh, another cast of characters. And then from yeah. there, I went to the WWF. Yeah. And uh, I was up there. Uh, my first manager was Captain Lou Albano. Yes. And that was in, uh, 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 I think it was like uh, November, December of 76. Yeah, 76. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, 76. And then yeah. uh, I did TV for a couple months. Then I legitimately started uh, in uh, January of 77. And yeah. my first match in Madison Square Garden, Bruno Sammartino. That was my first match. <sighs> and, uh, so then uh, Bruno and I wound up going around the whole loop. So, yeah. Uh, I wrestled him three times in every large arena. You know, yeah. Madison Square Garden, Boston Garden, Big Lou over in uh, um, uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, then we go down to Philadelphia to the Spectrum and uh, wow. uh, then uh, the Saddle Dome down there in uh, Washington, D.C., the Auditorium in Baltimore. Yeah, so I, I want people say, well, how many times did you actually wrestle Bruno? Four or five times? I said, yeah, 30 or 40 times. Yeah. I said, well, yeah. And they said, yeah. really? I said, yeah. Yeah. See, but back then we weren't on TV like the like it is nowadays. Everything you right. do is on TV. Yeah. Well, back in those days, we, we didn't have that type of coverage. I mean, right. we were on the TV show every week. Yes. But not four, five, six, seven times a week. No, and, but you were also a lot of in the, all the magazines. Yeah, we had I, magazines. You yeah. had, you were, I mean, there was probably what, 20 magazines back then that were out. And yeah. you were usually either on the cover or yeah. darn near, you know, one of the front pages. And yeah. I can remember as a kid, and I remember, and I got to ask you this, Ken, when you, you went from a big, bulky, 315 to 20 pound guy to this lean, mean muscle machine at yeah. 260. Yeah. I got to ask you, how in the heck were you able to do that? Because I know you had to go on a, a transformation as far as your diet and your mm -hmm. exercise. And I'm sure that was kind of difficult for you because I'm sure you... You know, had to were used to eating so much per day, and yeah. then you decided I'm going to cut some weight. I, what was that like for you? Yeah, well, I just quit drinking. <laughs> well, that helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I cut from 20, 20 some beers a day down to no beer. I just eliminated the beer, and got rid of the wow. the bread, and. Uh, the ice cream and cookies and all that stuff just cleaned my diet up and yeah. then i started running more okay and uh uh you know r r riding a bike uh d doing uh, more cardiovascular mm -hmm. and uh next thing you know after about five or six months i yeah. went from 315 down to 265 yeah uh, and you were and, chiseled uh, uh, a body of blue twisted steel and sex appeal. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, this is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to talk to you today about my friends over at Super Friends Signatures. These guys have all kinds of wrestling products, past and present. They sell action figures, autographed pictures, you name it, they have it. My friends David Harrow and Brian Koenig they are the real deal. Go to their website today, superfriendsignatures.com, or go to their Facebook page, Super Friend Signatures. Check them out. Folks, you will not regret it. They have great prices and great deals on all kinds of products. And every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Time, they have an auction online at their Facebook page. So please check it out, Super Friend Signatures today, and enjoy the podcast. Yeah, I, I can remember that because I remember... Because yeah. back then, you know, the magazines, you didn't see you on TV all the time. And I just remember when I was a kid, 
I'm watching wrestling and they introduced you and I'm like, Mike, that that's him. I mean, because you were all chiseled, uh, yeah. you know, and, and just jacked. And uh, I was like, I thought Ken Patero was a big, bulky Olympic, Olympic weightlifter dude. And uh, uh, I just remember the transformation. I've always wondered. I mean, I know it takes diet and stuff, but I know if you changed a little bit besides the cardiovascular, your weightlifting regiment or anything like that. Yeah, well, the thing is, I always had all the muscle underneath. Okay. I had that adipose, adipose tissue on top, which is a, a layer of fat. <laughs> but you needed that fat. You needed that bulk, you know. Yeah. So I just started dieting and exercising, and, and then I, I got rid of the outer layer. Mm -hmm. While underneath that outer layer was tons of muscle. Yeah. So I just uh, uh, defined the muscle up a little bit. And yeah. Now that, that was it. People said, well, what kind of steroids did you take? I said, I didn't take steroids. I said, I yeah. didn't need the steroids. The muscle was already there yeah. from all those years of heavy weightlifting. I, I was going to say, most guys that did do that in your era are no longer here because they yeah. abused them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I was uh, going over, uh, uh, I had an autograph session up here uh, north of Minneapolis last weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sold 28 books in two hours, all autographed, pictures taken with the people, just in a yeah. little town, a little tiny yeah. town, 8,000 people. And uh, God, I had a good time. We're yeah. in a sports bar there. My uh, my oldest daughter uh, helped set it up. Uh, she got all the books organized and the pictures and whatnot and yeah. uh, took the money. It's always good to keep the money in the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So uh, yeah. two hours, you know, we, we sold... Uh, over twelve hundred dollars worth of uh, merchandise, you know, wow, books and pictures great. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that was fun. Yeah. And uh, my youngest daughter, she came up with her boyfriend. Uh, okay. Came up from Minneapolis. And wow. uh, yeah, so we had a good time. Good deal. Want we'll to talk about uh, people you've worked with? I got to ask you. Who was one of the persons, either as an opponent or as a tag team, that you really just enjoyed working with, that you just had the chemistry with? Well, uh, one of my first tag team partners, the big John Stud. Yes. And, uh, that's when we were both down in uh, uh, Cro working for Jim Crockett Promotions down in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that had to be around 70, let's see, 79, I believe. Okay. And uh, then, uh, but the guy I really liked being uh, tag team partners with was Jerry Blackwell. Oh, gosh, and, yes. Yeah. The Sheiks. Jerry Blackwell. <laughs> 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 well, Jerry was only like 5'10", but he weighed 450 pounds. And he was a hell of an athlete. He could drop yes. kicks you right in the forehead. Yeah. And uh, I wound up doing a program with him down in St. Louis. Okay. Uh, if you remember. Uh, and uh, at that time, I was the only person in wrestling to ever hold the Intercontinental Belt and the Missouri State Championship belt at the same time. Same time. Yes. Think, I, I, what year was that? Was that 81? I want to say 80 or 81. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So yeah. those were, I loved wrestling in St. Louis. Keel Auditorium. Yeah. And then once or twice a year, we go to the Checker Dome. Yeah. And uh, I got to wrestle my favorite wrestler, uh, Dick the Bruiser. <laughs> ah, yeah, Dick the Bruiser. 
Yeah. Old um, school. Yeah, definitely. He was yeah. a classic. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. All right, Ken. I want one last thing and we'll let you go. I want your book. You just have a book published. Ken Patera, Weight of the World. There it is, folks. Just give us a little bit of insight in it. I don't want to give away the whole story. So just kind of give us a little tidbit, if you will, about the book and well, if you would please. I, I didn't cover everything in my life, but I did start when I was like four or five years old. Okay. So it's, a, it's an outline from when I was just a little guy mm -hmm. and uh, about my family and whatnot up to mm -hmm. uh, high school, college, uh, the Olympic Games, and uh, then uh, into uh, uh, professional wrestling. Okay. And uh, it, everybody that I know that's bought and read the book, just they rave about it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. And so it's an easy read. It's almost mm -hmm. 500 pages. But like I say, it's an easy read. It'll hold your attention. Yeah. And I tell about, uh, you know, Andre the Giant and myself uh, going out and drinking in Japan and <laughs> in the United States and whatnot. And yeah. Yeah. I The people say, you ever have a beer with Andre? I said, Andre the Giant? And I said, yeah, about... Uh, Oh, I don't know. I probably went out with him over a thousand times. Really? What was that like? <laughs> yeah. Said, Every one of them were identical. <laughs> it's in the book, right? <laughs> uh, it's all in the book. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Uh, unfortunately, when we were in St. Louis, I wasn't, I got so distracted with other, I didn't get one, but I'm going to get one. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. a couple of my friends have read it, Ken, and they absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. It's it's on Amazon. Get it. I'm going to get it. Thank you, oh. Ken Patera. Thank you for coming yeah. on today, yeah. sir. I'll tell you an even better way to get it. KenPatera.com. There you go. I'll put that in the description. And I didn't know you had that. PayPal, KenPatera.com. Okay. And that way I can personally autograph it for you. Yeah. And uh, get it in the mail. My daughter does mm -hmm. all the mailing. She has her own business. All right. Great. And uh, so uh, she sells CBD oil and uh, pain palms. And she's a okay. father. And she makes her all okay. her uh, custom made ceramic uh, stuff. So. She oh, has wow. a stu studio down the hallway from where I live. Okay. She has, uh, her office farther down from that. And okay. So we can take care of everybody. Ken Patera, Weight of the Weight World. Of the world. <laughs> KenPatera.com. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, you're on Facebook, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. put that in there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the original world's strongest man, gold medalist of the Pan Am Games, Olympic weightlifter, icon, legend of pro wrestling, Mr. Ken Patera. Sir, thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Always nice to see your lovely face. Yeah, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> Uh, all right, folks, if you're listening, thank you. If you're watching, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will talk to you soon.